Hey, what's up guys, Sir Amanon here, back with another episode of Road to 1000 Dueling Mc Rating. I apologize that I've been kind of missing in action for the past couple of days here. Um, that's actually because I spent quite a while, uh, you know, playing, just sitting down and playing a lot of games uh, on the ladder. I've been grinding quite a lot lately, and you guys can see on the screen, like, towards the bottom where the uh, Dueling Mc profile picture of mine would normally be, um, that I have currently around 341 rating as of the game that I'm recording here. But... As of actually recording this video, like in real time, I have over 800. So I've been playing a lot, a lot of games. And uh, it's been quite fun actually just kind of uh, re-immersing myself into the metagame. I've been playing a lot of different decks. So if you guys are a big fan of this series or just like watching gameplay in general uh, and want to see like a lot of different things in action, uh, there will be plenty of decks uh, that I will uh, hopefully get around to showcasing. Uh, of course, depending on the quality of the games here. But uh, I just haven't gotten the chance to actually you know sit down and record so that's what i'm going to be doing right now and uh, you guys can expect to see a lot of content in uh, particularly this week i'm going to try and get videos out very very frequently but um this episode we're going to be playing dragon link again and this is going to be the sort of preliminary like day one of toon chaos build again so uh once again it's not really super refined but uh it's all right it still is more of like a proof of concept than anything else um and like it, it get it was a lot of the theory that I kind of had going into the uh, release of Toon Chaos, not really expecting or, or knowing what to expect necessarily. But I would probably go back and make changes to the build. Uh, I know some of you guys definitely asked to see the deck profile, and I will definitely be getting around to that uh, pretty soon. Uh, you guys can expect that profile up um, in the upcoming uh, couple of days here. But if I were to go back and revisit it, I would certainly make a lot of changes and maybe even like try and change up like the actual combo itself. Uh, probably would try to do that. Um, for sure, because I think there's more efficient ways that I can kind of sequence my uh, sequence my plays. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be going against uh, Alter Guys today, which is a pretty interesting matchup because uh, traditionally, like combo versus uh, like Geist specifically, is just all about like trying to play through the early stages um, before they can really really get their like resource looping going with like uh, you know recycling like Faker uh, with like. You know all, all of their uh like all they're looping with like melistic searches silk rev like reviving back like manifestation uh like bouncing back a uh, figure and stuff so like you want to end the game as fast as you can uh and there's like you know i have a lot of experience uh in this type of matchup especially with uh like when i was playing lunalite you know for the past couple of formats um but i also play a lot of geist myself so like i'm pretty well versed in exactly what like geist is looking for as far as like its win conditions and stuff uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just uh, jump into the game. So you guys saw, um, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but he won the uh, the die roll and chose to go first. And uh, this is kind of what a brick hand and Geist looks like here. So uh, this is one of the frustrating things about playing that deck and why it's like probably like not one of the top three. Um, just because like you open hands like this and then you're just super sad. Because um, like you either open too many Geist cards or too few. Uh, in this case, obviously it's too few. And uh, a lot of people are... are playing a lot of hand traps i think geist has to kind of adapt and play like a lot more hand traps than like regular traps um, i'm not even playing judgment in my build uh main or side uh, personally i just think the format is too fast for it um but uh yeah like ghost ogre is a hand trap that's been seeing more play lately um just as like an addition to like the standard package of like ash imper and valor and nibiru um i feel like that's like a standard 12 and then like next up is things like phantasme like um, Moonlit Chill and then like Ghost Ogre um, like those are other hand traps people are looking to like if they want to like add to the lineup uh, but yeah like his hand is obviously not very good so he's just gonna set uh, three and pass um, now it is meaningful disruption especially because he was able to go first so I kind of have to contend with that if, it, if we were going first like we'd be able to play through Ogre m most likely and it probably wouldn't be an issue but you're yeah, gonna go start off with a black metal dragon. So our hand is really, really good, right? Except we drew Wyvern Burst for turn, uh, which actually really, really makes things super clunky and awkward. Because normally with Chaos Base, we pitch a dark to search Wyvern Burster, um, but we drew our only light target off Chaos Base. So like the only thing, or the only way we can use it is like to pitch the Wyvern Burster to search something. But like our search targets are Collapse Serpent, which doesn't make any sense because we have have Wyvern Burster already, uh, or like Levianir or um what's it called the chaos creator which is like fine but i figure like you know our initial play is probably not going to resolve through three back rows so we need more like actual extenders like levinu could be okay to force later but like if if we like get stopped early then you know we need to have like a backup plan so that's why i hold off obviously on using chaos space at the start um 
But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start off with Black Metal Dragon. This is a really good way to force disruptions. You can chain block the Striker or the Black Metal Dragon based on what you value more uh, at the time. And uh, it's just really, really good at possibly forcing disruptions. Um, like some people don't like w prefer to wait till later things like uh, Hawker for Brax or like LP and stuff. But uh, it, it's like so much value off just one card. Uh, but yeah, going ahead and summoning the Striker Dragon. And he actually uh, strikes the summon of it. Which is really unfortunate because we do have a fairly rocket heavy hand. Uh, so I was playing with like more rockets in the engine than what people are normally playing right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I was playing around with like Magna and like Recharger, and uh, I might have been playing Silver in this build. I'm not 100% sure. I can't quite remember. It's been a while since I played like this this build. But uh, yeah, Shrine is also there to send Absa Router, which is there to search Tracer, of course. So like this is actually like a pretty rocket heavy hand. Uh, so denying striker sucks, especially because I only played one in this build, and that's one of the things I would definitely change. Uh, you know, I, I'd probably play two striker, because um, uh, my my build was like really, really, or my combo was like really, really different than like what a lot of people were doing, um, which is like normally summon LP then summon striker. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, we searched red MD still off of the the black metal dragon. Uh, so next up, we kind of have to use one for one because we just don't really have any bodies on the board. Um, and we have to summon out the Wyvern Burster, uh, which definitely turns off our Chaos Space because, again, we don't have any other light targets. Uh, but we also need to try and get to Romulus because that's, like, the only real play that we have left. Uh, and the summon of Ro or Romulus does get Judgmented, which is also really unfortunate. Um, so we're left with the Wyvern Burster search for Collapse Serpent. And here I'm thinking, right, he has pretty low life, so I'm going to try and summon uh, Red MD after summoning the Collapse Serpent and then bring back like uh, something like a Magna Rocket and then attack for game. Because that is actually just enough damage. Um, so that's like what I go for here, summon Collapse Serpent, summon Red MD and try and use Red MD, but that gets Ghost Ogred. So that is pretty unfortunate. Uh, so Shrine is going to be sending Router like I mentioned, uh, but again with no way to really get Tracer onto the board, uh, it's not really going to accomplish a whole lot this turn. Uh, so he has attack and then uh, pass turn. Because uh, again, Chaos Space, pretty dead in that particular moment in time. Uh, so he draws another Strike, uh, which he sets, and he sets a uh, Ogre as well. Uh, strike is offline, obviously, because he doesn't have enough life to pay for it. Uh, and here I make a I make a really, really silly play, where I just go Normal Summon Tracer, and I enter the battle phase. So it's clear that he's bricked, right? So obviously, what's he going to set besides a Hand Trap? Um, and like most, you know, it could have been maybe a Veiler, I suppose, but like... You know, realistically, I could expect like an Ash as well. So like, if I'm trying to go for a game, like I don't have to fear Strike. Like maybe I can fear Judgment, but like if he has Judgment, that's just another disruption out of the way, and uh, we just can kind of carry on. But like, you know, this kind of like is the same thing as far as you know actually you know not being able to get anywhere as far as killing him this turn. Um, so yeah, what I should have done was just uh, activate the Black Garden. And then uh, Tracer pop the Garden to summon Recharger, and then uh, make Borrowed Savage, and then equip uh, Romulus, and then just attack for game. But uh, I, for some reason, didn't even consider the Hand Trap. Uh, and what's even worse now is I can actually activate this Ogre, because um, <laughs> it's on field, and it works for its face up on field as well. Uh, but I just end up passing, because um, like now I can't make Savage, because he can Ogre the Savage on summon uh, when it go to use its effect. So like that is really, really bad. But uh, he draws Ash, uh, he normals it, and then he goes for Hulk first. Like, I'm not entirely sure why he went for the play. Like, he could have just passed on sitting on Ogre because, like, you know, I wasn't really getting over it um, with like the current board state, um, and like just having Ash would have been like fine to stop any potential follow-ups. But uh, he ends up actually just conceding. Um, but the reason why that play was so bad was like, say that top deck instead of being Ash was like a Melaseek or like any Geist card really because they have spoofing. So like I, I should have definitely gotten punished for not ending the game that turn, uh, but luckily uh, he ended up still being bricked. So that is how that went. So definitely a misplay. Should have actually just ended the game. Like the worst that could have happened was like an imperm or a strike or a compulse or something. Um, but you know, forcing a disruption while on the way to a play that would actually assemble lethal on board is a lot better than going for the play I did that wasn't lethal anyway and ended up just not doing anything at all. So. Um, definitely should have just tried to actually go for the game there. But um, yeah, going into game two, I technically don't know what he's playing because I haven't seen any cards, but I have an educated guess that it's Geist. Um, just because like I'm so used to Geist hands looking exactly like that. So 
Um, yeah, I'm not really too surprised, especially when he uh, summons Border. I'm like, all right, it's probably Geist because like Geist does tend to side this card, like especially for the mirror, um, which I presume you know a lot of players were preparing for the mirror, uh, like initially when the format kind of started, because um, of course Faker had just gone to three at that point. Um, but he's gonna summon Border and set two, um, trying to play a little bit around like a uh, Evilly or uh, Lightning Storm. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go into main phase. So like. Border kind of is, it, it kind of hurts our deck because uh, a lot of our plays revolve around um, like links, and we don't really go into synchros until a lot later. And we have to activate a lot of monster effects, of course. But like the goal I have in mind here is that like we have Red MD, which can attack over it, and we have a fair amount of extensions. So like I want to force the back row before I try and deal with the border. So the play for me here is to summon Cipher, and then go into Striker Dragon and activate Striker's effect. Uh, that gets met with strike, um, so like here he's probably thinking he's can strike this because like negated activations count towards a uh, border's limit. So essentially, with striker being negated and off the board, like in theory, I shouldn't really have a play because like that's my one monster effect. Um, so like knowing this from his perspective, that's kind of like the thought process that I was trying to take advantage of um, and try and like lure him into that trap. If you know what, if that makes sense. Um, so like the follow-up will be to use what like the guard dragon to bring back safer and then uh, summon red MD and then just attack over it and do plays in main phase two so uh, I go ahead and do that and then in main phase two I go ahead and use red MD uh, he imperms it and I make a mistake by actually not using this reborn here so I for some reason thought that the summon of striker dragon was the one that got striked uh, not the effect but it was actually the effect uh, I can read the chat here. I know you guys can't see it, but um, I can read the chat. So what I could have done was easily just reborn and go for uh, go for the full play because uh, I had access to um, I had access to Romulus, right? So like, I could have just gone Romulus and then pitch Router to send like uh, I I'm playing Galactic Spiral Dragon in this build, so I could send that, um, and or, or I could send uh, Levianir and then like summon Safer back with Pisty and then like banish it again to like add back Levianir and like rip a card later. Uh, but like that would have gotten me access to the full combo. Um, now, to be fair, like Romulus maybe wouldn't have been enough because, um, uh, like I'm kind of thinking about this more because this game happened a while ago. So I'm trying to think like my thought process again. Um, so this is kind of like live in the moment sort of thinking that you guys get to see from me. So uh, technically, actually, Romulus doesn't really do enough because I'm not playing like Divine Lance because uh, again, like I I didn't think to use Divine Lance until obviously people started playing it. Um, but uh, yeah, Ravine wouldn't have really gotten anywhere because like, I get access to Tracer, but I don't really actually really have a play afterwards because I don't have another extender. Um, although, actually, hmm, let's think about this. So I could summon Noctivision when I summon Striker Dragon as well. Uh, and then I could have linked that and like Striker or that and like Red MD into uh, Romulus and that could have gotten me another draw as well. So like th there could have been a lot of different uh, lines of play there. Um, but like th this route here isn't too bad. Um, as long as like I don't die this turn, which you know guys typically doesn't kill you uh, with that like initially really really good setup. Which uh, he didn't have turn one because he opened border, right? So like it it's also okay to pass here and like play for next turn to like reborn back the Red MD and then do that whole play. Um, next turn like that's fine um but uh yeah not having like boost sector launch like kind of just you know messes everything up as far as the rocket engine is concerned so um again that's like another very strong case to play two striker because like this is you know the situations you can find yourself in but uh he's gonna summon Meliseek and then kill red md and uh go and search faker in main phase two and set crackdown and set strike so um, we still have to play through a fair amount of interruptions here. And we draw a Chaos Creator, which is uh, not the best draw, especially because I don't have any lights in my graveyard. Uh, like this deck has a very, very low light count. Um, the lights are like Wyvern Burster, Safer, and uh, Link Cross, and I think that's actually it. So uh, yeah, not too many lights, and uh, it makes it really, really hard to like actually use this outside of like when you full combo, which is like why I feel I would definitely refine the build a lot more to be less reliant on this card. Um, not that I'm like super reliant on having this resolve because I'm only playing one of it, but the idea is like you can search it out Brotar if you target a Thunder Dragon because I am playing a Thunder Engine if you guys saw the last video. But, you know, like it's it's cool to be able to recycle resources. Like you can use this to recycle your Guard Dragons after you banish them off of um, either Trish Fusion or like uh, Levianir or something. 
Um, or you can summon it back in like a later turn if you do it that way as well. Like there's a lot of cool applications this card has. It's just uh, you know it, it's kind of conditional and it, it is dependent on what type of deck you're playing. But I feel like a deck that is more thunder centric is uh, probably going to make use of this card a lot better, especially because Thunder Dragon Fusion can search this. But uh, I'm kind of going on a bit of a tangent here. We're going to go ahead and reborn the Red MD, uh, which I believe gets crackdowned. Uh, I'm going to activate Noct Division uh, on the summon of Red MD. Um, but he's going to uh, crack down the, the Red MD as well. And here I'm basically out of place, right? Because I can't do anything. Um, I don't have any way to summon Router or Chaos Creator, and I don't have like a link to go into. Um, like Maybe I could have summoned this. Um, in attack position and like crashed into Link Rebo and tried to draw a card. Um, but that seems like not very good. Um, and, and just knowing that he has like Geist plays and he summoned Melisic instead of Silk, like I knew that he knew he was going to go for uh, an aggressive push next turn. So I decided to just scoop that one up. Um, perhaps, I think, I think possibly still waiting like on the Reborn. Like I, I can't understand why I thought that would be okay, but I think in hindsight still that was probably the less optimal play because like me ending up using the reborn to get red md back and then red md using its effect on the following turn after it got cleared with metal Sleek ended up being the same number of monsters anyways uh as i would have had with like the situation where i could have used reborn as an extender um but i mean it's to, to be fair i didn't know he had metal Sleek in hand right uh but um still like it ended up just being the same play a turn later where he got a chance to search faker and have like um you know his like additional back row and stuff so uh, it just ended up being i feel like the wrong play All right so his hand uh, has sphere mode in it which is uh pretty interesting because I, I feel like sphere mode is just like not that great this format um just because like for one against combat little which they don't end on three but also like even against ad emancipator like it it's really really difficult to you know, push past, like, the follow-ups, because, like, the combo decks just have so much, like, insane follow-up potential, and, like, you don't even necessarily clear all of their board even all the time with uh, this, like, against, like, the big, big combo decks. Plus, like, Geist is pretty reliant on his normal summon, like, early on, especially. But, uh, yeah, our hand is, like, really, really good. He doesn't have any hand traps, so we're actually gonna free combo off here. Um, but, yeah, pitching Roar off Chaos Space is, like, a bonus. Uh, my combo doesn't actually require... Any specific discard like a lot of people showcase you know again chaos space pitching roar or router um but you know you can pitch any dark and like it's still just a a single you know play by itself um being chaos space but uh this just gives us extra flexibility uh we can go ahead and summon summon the dark off of the uh the roar and this actually also allows us to not have to go into the uh the tristula fusion because again like the cards that i normally banish is the uh, roar uh, i could go into it in theory against a different matchup where the extra deck banished is more important but in this against this matchup obviously that doesn't matter um so we're gonna go ahead and link away wyvern burster for striker and then get uh, our search for sector we unfortunately drew collapse serpent um so we don't get as much value there but uh we're still gonna get pretty good value uh, he has to read the brute sector there that's why i activated it um but uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and summon collapse serpent then use chaos space to recycle the wyvern burster uh, and then we pick up a copy of Black Metal, which is really, really good because we didn't normal summon yet. Uh, so we have a lot of options available to us. So we can go Romulus and then grab ourselves a uh, Wyvern Burster as well as a Search for Ravine. Um, and we have Router in our hand. Uh, so we can go ahead and send like a Levy in here because uh, we have Safer as well. Uh, so I can go for something like uh, maybe something like Brotar off of the LP and then pitching Safer to search something and then like adding back a uh, Levy in here off the Safer. Uh, and I could like piss you back the safer. Like, that, that's like a play I could do in theory. Again, I don't quite remember exactly what happened. Uh, so we're going to find out. Uh, Router searches Tracer, and then Brute Sector launch is going to go ahead and summon out the Tracer. Um, so you get to see a lot of my combo here. Uh, so go to Link Cross, and then go into a Fiber with Link Cross and the, um, the Tracer. Uh, summon the Red Rose off of that, and then go for the Garden Rose Maiden play. Um, this is. This, this card's really, really good. <laughs> Um, possibly ban worthy, possibly. Uh, Red Rose summons out the White Rose and Garden Rose Maiden searches the Black Garden. And then we make Appaloosa with the uh, the Maiden, the White Rose, and the Fiber. So like, normally in most cases this Dragon Dark's not going to be here. But because it is here, we can actually do a pretty cool play where we... Um, well, we can normally summon the Black Metal. Normally what you do is like you banish the Garden Rose Maiden to summon the White Rose back. But uh, that's decent follow-up, so I decided to just keep it there. Because, again, we haven't used our normal summon, so we can just 
go ahead and summon black metal and get uh, red eyes anyway. Uh, we go into LP and we search red MD and then LP can summon Brotar. Uh, and then we can go ahead and Brotar target the uh, the Dragon Dark to search Chaos Creator and pitch the safer. So it's like I was saying earlier, um, he asked to read uh, Brotar and uh, pitching is not the cost. So that's why I put safer back in my hand. But um, yeah, we search Chaos Creator by uh, targeting the Dragon Dark off the Brotar. And then uh, it's like I mentioned, you know, add back Levy in here. It's really, really good. Um, and then Pissy can summon back the the safer and because we don't have to go Trish Fusion, I don't really mind summoning this back because like sometimes it's like not ideal to banish it and then summon it back if like you have to banish it again for Trish anyway. Like um, unless if you like don't really care about this being in circulation for like uh, recycling Levianir and stuff, but um, I guess that seldom comes up in a lot of instances. Um, but like it, it is a thing to think about. Um, yeah, so I can activate Black Garden here, and then I go for the Protector Whelp to clear my Guard Dragons. Uh, and then it summons a token, and then I banish three to summon a Levianir, uh, and then Levianir goes ahead and rips a card, it is the Faker, and then summon another token, and then Garden can go ahead and use its second effect to get Tracer back. Um, this is something I believe the FDK build doesn't do, uh, is like to use Garden as an extender, uh, but like yeah, get, this game by Tracer is really really nice. Um, so I link away my two dragons for Union Carrier. And then I think I think for a little bit here, I'm like, do I want to summon Chaos Creator? I'm like, yeah, I kind of kind of have to because like it's the only uh, other eight that I have, and I'm actually not even able to use its effect because I just ran out of space on the board. Uh, so, yeah, uh, probably a bit of a bad timing in using the Garden there. I should have held off a little bit because like again, like the way the way Black Garden second effect works, of course, like you have to have exactly the uh, attack value of the monster in the grave. So like you have to specifically have your opponent with um with two tokens. Um, so like I, I kind of just mismanaged that a little bit. So ideally, what would have happened was I would have had like the setup with a uh, chaos creator. I could have brought back uh, basically anything, um, and like recycled a bunch of resources in the process. And uh, I would have had like a tracer to be able to like use this play later. Um, but yeah, I just go for thirty eight uh, in that instance. Uh, I kind of misclicked there, but. Uh, Carrier is going to go ahead and equip the Dragon Buster, um, which again isn't like the greatest against Geist, but like it's there, might as well. Uh, I just, you know, might, might as well. Uh, and then I use Tracer on the Dark to uh, grab Silver. So I am playing Silver. Um, and then Dark Search is Duo. This isn't really going to like be super impactful because like uh, this doesn't really, um, like it doesn't really offer a lot in follow up plays because I'm running such a small Thunder Dragon engine. So like. I don't even think I have another target to search off a of dark here, um, but it's all right. Oh, I also have a protector web as another light. I guess that's like the other light target, but but yeah, I'm very few lights in this deck for uh, what I was talking about earlier in game number one, I think. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, summon Savage and then uh, pass on that. So yeah, he's gonna sphere mode, uh, and this actually does get rid of my board. Um, but I'm not too worried about it because he doesn't have his normal summon now, uh, and because I got rid of his uh, his faker with the uh, with the Levianir, which I suppose was relatively lucky. Um, we're pretty okay here, and I was never actually forced to use the uh, Red MD at any point during the last turn, so I actually have a fair amount of follow up here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add back the Levianir off the safer again. You know that loop is really really important in like grind situations. Uh, and having that Light and Grave actually was super relevant at this particular point because I do need to pop cards to try and just force stuff. So uh, he strikes the Levianir, understandably, because, um, you know, he has, uh, he has spoofing, so he kind of wants to use it. And then uh, I use Unicorn, and then he doesn't end up actually using the spoofing. Uh, we talk about this later uh, after the game, because uh, I asked him, like, how come he didn't use spoofing? Because like, he showed me his hand, um, and he, he, like... I think he thought that uh, he would be able to summon Faker because like the trap wouldn't be on the field, but uh, he still activated it, of course. So um, like, he could have gotten Faker like for an extra interrupt, um, but in the grand scheme of things, that wouldn't have made that big of a difference because like he just didn't have the Geist resources. The spoofing would have been shuffled back still regardless, and um, like he would have just had Faker in hand, Silk would have died, and he would have had like Ash, Ash Faker, and whatever his next top deck would have been. So. Um, I don't know if it would have mattered that much, um, but yeah, I go ahead and 
uh, summon Venom D, and then bring back uh, Savage just to get attack. Yeah, so yeah, he shows me his hand, and, I, and then I ask him, and uh, we kind of just talk about that. But yeah, I don't know if Spoofing would have actually made that big of a difference there because of the fact that uh, again he just didn't really have resources there. Um, so we don't know his next top deck would have been, but uh, like it would have been, it would have hinged on that, right? It, it would have been very much dependent on like what his top deck would have been after like he went for um, for Faker and summoned Silk. Assuming he summoned Silk, if he summoned Melisic, then uh, like it would have been game regardless. I feel, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, there was kind of a long one, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. yeah, this is twenty five minutes. Geez, uh, but hope you guys enjoy kind of me talking through the deck a bit um, and some of. Especially a lot of the mistakes, or misplays and mistakes. Because um, I feel like that's something that I've kind of been missing in this series so far. Is uh, I haven't really talked about things that I've done wrong, necessarily. Um, but, yeah, like there, there are a lot of things I did inoptimally, or suboptimally. So, uh, you guys can go ahead and you know take that and, uh, I guess, use it as a learning experience, as will I. I have definitely learned a lot from kind of reviewing over my own game here. But... Again, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. Feel free to subscribe for more informative and competitive video content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All three links in the description as always. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.